Tropical Storm Aaron is nearing hurricane strength tonight as it continues to move west toward the Caribbean. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. We're going to have the latest information on Aaron, where it's potentially headed. And then also another little sneaky system in the Gulf that could spin out before working its way into Mexico or South Texas. Here is the latest on Aaron. And by the way, I'd love to know your thoughts. Post those in the comments and we'll get this thing going. 70 mile per hour tropical storm pressure at about 999 millibars. Still moving to the west. Book in at about 17 miles per hour. Hurricane hunters have been up in this. There's still evidence that the mid-level center and the low-level center are not completely co-located. There's still a little bit of shear out of the north and east. And that's really prevented... Big time strengthening, and this was expected, a gradual run-up to hurricane strength, at least in the early going, before it finds a better environment. We are still waiting on that northwest turn, though. It's getting close to the Lesser Antilles. It is still expected to do that. We'll show you some modeling coming up in just one second. But here is the latest official forecast, and you see it's an 8 o'clock Eastern Time advisory because the hurricane hunters did find 70-mile-per-hour winds within the storm. You'll get a special advisory if uh, there's an aircraft in there. Still expected to become a hurricane as it moves to the northeast of the Caribbean. Still watching, though, for parts of the Greater and, and greater Antilles and the Leeward Islands uh, due to the fact that if it does continue to ride on the southern periphery, we will get some outer bands. So impacts certainly not out of the question for the Caribbean. It's just how big are going to be those uh, are those impacts going to be? We wanted to take the northern track and get up and out here and then go right through the goalpost of Bermuda and the United States. Again, there is still that big curve away from Florida in the southeast corner of the United States, as it still looks like there is a big opening, a path north anyway, northeast, uh, away from Florida and away from the extreme southeast corner of the United States. I've been showing you the European ensembles, and now we're going to start to get much better data into the storm Thank because, uh, because of the hurricane hunters that are in there. I want to show you something uh, noticeable, though. Look where the center is. There are all the lines of the 51 ensemble members, and it's certainly riding on the southern end of those ensembles. Still, though, we followed those southern ensembles. It still has a gradual lifting to the north and east. It still hasn't missing the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas and Florida. We just have to watch on how close it gets to the Carolinas. Again, there's still a ton of uncertainty there. It's big, wide open. Nonetheless, I think there's an escape route for Florida. We're going to have to watch, again, the Turks and Caicos, part of the Greater Antilles, and then the Leeward Islands in the northeast corner there, just in case this thing just takes a little while longer to feel the weakness and start lifting up. So it's going to be interesting to see what the data shows with that fresh Hurricane Hunter Pass. I've been showing you this over the last couple of days and want to continue to do so. And again, we've certainly seen strengthening. We're in that peach color here on the tropical index. Uh, green and yellow, not that favorable for development or for strengthening. The peach and red color, it's getting to be favorable. So we're in that peach color. We expect some strengthening. And then as it moves out northeast of the Caribbean, it's really getting into some of the most... Uh, conducive environment that we have across the entire Atlantic Basin once we get out to late Monday, early Tuesday, as it starts to make that curve to the north a little bit. And then you see it, most of the models here, taking it up and out right exactly where we want it, to the west of Bermuda, to the east of the United States. Still cautiously optimistic that that happens, although the next several model runs, overnight runs, are going to get that Hurricane Hunter data in there. And uh, so by 12Z, 8 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, we should 100% have Hurricane Hunter data in those models. So those are going to be critical going forward when it comes to what's going on with Aaron. Here is the steering current update on that. Again, we've been watching, again, the potential for a ridge to build back a little bit faster than what is originally modeled. This is going to be Wednesday, August 20th. And when I say weakness, there it is. Uh, high pressure over Florida. As of this recording, it's causing the big heat if you're watching from Florida, the bigger than what we should be for late August or mid-August heat. That's retrograding back to the Rockies. That helps to open up the escape route here. We also have this dip in the jet stream. You see those lines kind of bend around Chicago uh, and then tilt towards New York City, Montreal. That helps to weaken this Bermuda high, and that allows where the orange kind of turns gray 
that is the pathway that I am hopeful that this eventual hurricane is going to take as it lifts north up and out. We'll continue to do that. You see the ridge starts to build underneath and then kind of flips up and in. Now, for future storms, we definitely don't like the placement of that. And there are a few more waves to watch that are rolling off of Africa. I'll show you some of the ensemble forecasts in just one second. But uh, that would help to nudge things further south, closer to the Caribbean. So for that, I want to bring you over to the European ensembles again on weathernerds.org. And I want to back this up again just to show you everything uh, that I'm looking at to help forecast this thing. And you clearly see all members there. Some get it close to the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas. I'm watching that closely for you guys. Uh, still optimistic of the turn, but then there's all of this mess. There's another wave here and another wave here that is going to be on August 22nd. So we're still watching Aaron, of course, that's on top of mind, but there are still a couple of weak waves behind Aaron now that are going to have the potential to do that. And then you see, as we get towards the 24th, there's it's anywhere from here to here. As we've seen, Aaron struggled a while because it's still not conducive in the main development region, and we'll likely see these waves do the same. And then the question is, okay, how strong is that high that I just showed you? Does it suppress it to the Caribbean, or does it back off and have an opening towards the Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, and maybe the southeast corner of the United States? In a video I did a couple weeks ago, I said that we'd have to watch for that pattern, that ridge over troubled waters pattern. Um, we'll see if that comes back. Hopefully, though, we'll go keep going back and forth. That thing stays way out there, and we continue to keep a trough in the east, that dip in the jet stream to help keep flinging things back out at sea. That's my hope. That might be a little wish casting, but again, that one's way out into the future. Of course, on top of mind is going to be Aaron, and for that, I want to show you with the uh, DeepMind, the Google Lab model. Let me turn on the ensemble members, which all these guys are, and you will see that still... Even with it riding on the southern end of the Google DeepMind, and you see that line there where we are currently, it's on the southern half. Sorry, I'm showing, showing the, wrong, the wrong screen. This is where the storm is, and it's still the gray line there. It's on the southern end of the Google DeepMind 50 members. It all still has it turning and lifting and going right up and around Bermuda and in between the United States. And that is because it's finding that opening. It's a giant opening. And we continue to hope that it takes it. Now, I want to show you this guy here. It's not all organized, but the Hurricane Center did raise the probability now up to 50%. Those numbers are outdated, but it's a 50% shot for development now in that part of the western Gulf, Bay of Campeche region as it slides north into south Texas and into uh, or onto the Mexican coastline. So something that we're watching there, just wanted to let you know that we have our eyes on that wider tropical view shows where we have Aaron clearly that sticks out like a sore thumb east of the Caribbean. Um, and then here are these other waves, wave number one, and then another wave emerging, a couple of waves emerging off. And we may have a few more waves off before the Atlantic kind of goes back to sleep for a little bit. And then maybe ramps up for a, a gangbusters second half, kind of late September, into August, kind of like what we saw last year. I want to know your thoughts. Post those in the comments, uh, and we will have that weather conversation. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to get to them. Thank you guys a ton for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll catch you next time. Consider subscribing too. Appreciate it. Have a good night.